Nubian art is as enchanting as it is mysterious. Nubian royalty left behind vast amounts of riches, from jewelry and sculpture to pottery and pyramids. It's all on view now in the largest show the Museum of Fine Arts has ever presented. It's fitting because the MFA literally began digging into the ancient culture more than a hundred years ago. In 1916, Museum of Fine Arts Egyptologist George Reisner was among the first archaeologists to excavate Kerma, an ancient city located in Nubia, what is now southern Egypt and Sudan. What he discovered was a treasure trove left by Nubians. What they give us is an early lesson, which is to be agents of ourselves and to realize ourselves through art. Culture, politics, through the expressive means. What Reisner and the MFA team gathered over the next 20 years of excavation became the largest collection of Nubian artifacts outside the region. He in literally invented the method of archaeological documentation. His meticulous photography, 40,000 glass negatives, and、um, thanks to that, we can reconstruct what he what he did. Rita Freed is the curator of Ancient Nubia Now, which offers more than 3,000 years worth of Nubian artifacts. What we're trying to do is to to show you just how remarkable these objects are, how sophisticated they are, how advanced the technology was. Edmund Barry Gaither is the director of the Museum of the National Center of Afro-American Artists, an MFA partner. When you come to the end, you have an appreciation of the beauty and aesthetics, of the fine craftsmanship, of the rich variety of kinds of things that were made. They are pieces that show us how ancient civilizations lived, and from the artifacts discovered in tombs, how they wanted to be remembered. From the ceramics of Kerma to the spectacular jewelry of the Nubian king Pianki, to the mysterious sculptures of its capital Meroe. These beautiful tulip-shaped beakers that are a combination of black and red in the same vessel. There's a statue that's about five feet tall. A beautiful example of a Nubian king, perfectly clothed and adorned with his cap crown. We have beautiful necklaces, large-scale inlays from temple walls. It's really amazing to us how they did it because it would be hard to reproduce that today. But what's just as fascinating about these objects is what we don't know about them. We only wish that the Nubians had left information in their own words for us, as the Egyptians did. They left us no writing. Most of what was written down about Nubian civilizations came from neighboring Egypt. Today, the MFA acknowledges that archaeologists, including Reisner, looked at Nubia with racial prejudice. When he saw the amazing material that came out of these sites, he concluded at Kerma, for example, that this material was too good to have been made by Black Africans. It must be Egyptian. One of the goals of the exhibition, Freed says, is not only to highlight the treasures, but also to set the record straight on Nubia's place in history. You see a progression of the development of the different styles that. We identify as Nubian. In some cases, they're very similar to Egyptian. They take what they want and mold it in their own way. What an exhibition like this does is it provides well-defined historical brick in a wall that is itself much bigger. Edmund Barry Gaither also says the exhibition feels like a family reunion. It is、uh, at a personal level. Uh, a little bit like、uh, visiting how you imagine your great 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 grandfathers and mothers. At another level, it's to enter a story of another of the great adventures in the human enterprise of civilization. Here, the MFA distances itself from the racist narrative of its forebears. Nubia no longer lives in the shadow of Egypt, but as an equal civilization that rose. Conquered and created on its own terms. These people, at every point, had a sense of participation in the world of their times. They were not victims. They were not bystanders. They had interest, and they acted to realize those interests.